What's up, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Falcons Final Whistle Podcast. I'm Scott Baer, alongside Chris Rim and Tori McElhaney. We are checking in with you from Charlotte, North Carolina, Bank of America Stadium after the Falcons came away victorious with a 29-21 to result that was essential, absolutely vital, maybe even must win. I don't know. But it was key to the Falcons staying relevant as we move forward through the final stretch of this 2021 season. Tori McElhaney, what was your biggest takeaway from what we saw here in Charlotte? I think my biggest takeaway, it was actually really interesting because it was the exact, it's the same takeaway that I had against when the Falcons lost at Tampa last week. Uh, It's all about the line of scrimmage. And last week, the takeaway was that it wasn't good. And this week, the takeaway is that it was much improved, which I think is kind of funny, like the juxtaposition of what it was last week to this week. And I will say, I thought one of the best quotes of of the post-game press conferences with Arthur Smith was when he said that he thought that there was a physicality that the line of scrimmage played with. And, And I think you could see that on both the offensive and defensive lines. The offensive line, the way that they made holes to run the ball. The defensive line, the way they affected the quarterback. Even though there wasn't, a, there was only one sack, they're still getting Cam Newton and P.J. Walker just uncomfortable in the pocket, and that's a step in the right direction. Yeah, I thought you asked a great question of Arthur Smith in the press conferences. How can you see the better play along the lines of scrimmage. And he said, because we're moving the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Defensively said, backwards, offensively forwards. So and yeah. that's a really positive sign. It's yeah. basic, but it makes tons of sense. Yeah, he literally said, it moved. Talking yeah. about the line of scrimmage, it moved. But it's perfectly said, right? There's, there are so many times I think people try and overcomplicate football. And yeah. sometimes it's as simple as just moving the line of scrimmage. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, before we get to Chris Room's takeaway, let's just break down how this thing works. Five minutes on four different topics where we are going to go over how well this uh, uh how much better this defensive line and, and i'm sorry this defense played the fact that they took it personally we're going to talk about the run game we're going to talk about our players of the game and as always we're going to look forward and see what this game means and uh for the falcons over the course of the final couple of games chris rim looking back at this game what was your uh what was something that stood out to you uh, same thing as last week for me in terms – and I think it's been the same thing all season, just consistency. Yeah. And I think after the game, for me, it was kind of noticeable to see the difference in the way the veterans talked and the way that kind of the younger guys talked. 100, um, yeah. After the win, Grady and Matt were kind of like, that was all right. <laughs> that is so <laughs> we, true. We won. It was cool, but that was – it wasn't what it should have been. Um, they domin- I thought they dominated the first half. Then the second half, the Panthers looked like they were on their way to – they had the momentum, and then Cam trips on a center's foot, and the game goes in their direction. So I think, again, four quarters of consistent football is something that Matt Ryan admitted they're still chasing, something that's hard to do, but, again, consistency. But like he said also in his press conference, who cares? Yeah. They won. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> they I won, also, so it doesn't matter that right, much. Right, and I also think that people need to understand that there is a difference between perfection completion and yeah. consistency yeah those three words are all different and they yeah. all mean very different things for this falcons team in 2021 breaking it down i <laughs> mean let's put that on the quote title. exactly like, yeah. uh, line it up and it's very accurate and we're going to get into all this we're going to break things down um for this Falcons team and what we saw against Carolina. But before we do all that, a big thank you to our sponsor, Microsoft Windows 11, the official operating system of the NFL and the Atlanta Falcons. The all-new Windows 11 is here to bring you closer to what you love, like this Falcons Final Whistle podcast. Learn all about the awesome new features of Windows 11 at Windows.com. We're starting quarter number one, talking about defense. The Atlanta Falcons defense, which the last time... They played Carolina. They gave up more than 200 yards rushing on, I think, 47 carries. Yeah. That's a lot. Uh, it's It wasn't a high per carry average necessarily, but any time that a team runs 200 on you, yeah. that ain't good. Michael Walker said he took it personally. He said the defense the took, defense it, took, took it personally. The defense took it personally. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that's key that they were able to cut that rushing total in half against this team, and that was vital to – uh, what we saw with the end result. Yeah, it's funny because you think back to what Dean Pease was saying during the week when he was talking about playing a team twice, and he said, 
you know, I've been in this business long enough to know that w- when a team does something really well the first time you play them, they're going to, of course, go back to it to see if you fixed it. Yeah. And that was the quote, to see if you fixed it. And, and the Falcons, I think, looking at this coming in, they knew that Carolina was going to want to establish the run early. And the fact that they were able to cut the production in half, go from 203 rushing yards to giving up 91 this week, I think that's a really stark difference in contrast. Yeah, and I think all week um, the, the, the Falcons – defensive players didn't shy away from admitting that this that this was something that was harped on all week that Dean Pease got after them about giving up the rushing yards and I don't think I don't think the emphasis was so much on they gave up 203 rushing yards because I don't like Dean has said before that he doesn't care about the yards <laughs> right. he cares about the points and they also had 47 carries right so if you run the ball 50 times you know if you get 200 okay uh, but I think what the big what the big deal was. Sam Darnold had 66 yards on eight carries. On eight carries, yeah. one that came on a on a second and four, he ran for 20 yards, and one that came on like a third and nine in the fourth quarter that sealed the game, where he scrambled for 11 yards. Those were two plays that that we learned from this week. Players told us those were two plays that he put up in the film room and said this cannot happen. And then Sam Darnold's on IR, and you have one of the best Russian quarterbacks, you know, one ever. One of the most physical runners. Yeah, one of the most physical yeah, runners ever at the quarterback position. Yeah. So now, you know, you got to buckle up, and it's really a challenge to see. And, and they stepped up today, and, and we saw that. And I think that was the big difference here um, in terms of how they how they managed that. Yeah, Carolina had some sloppy play yeah. over the course of this game, dot, dot, dot. But the Falcons took advantage of it. Mm-hmm. That They got takeaways. They, they, they recovered fumbles. They were able to turn some of those opportunities into points. And those are real positives. Obviously, Michael Walker was the highlight. The guy had quite a week, shall we say. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, New dad, Michael Walker. Yeah. Uh, New dad, Michael Walker. And uh, now the the proud papa had his first career interception and his first pick six. That was a a, a huge deal. A.J. Terrell had a pick. Could have had a second one. It was really close. And uh, Grady Jarrett lands on a fumble. Those types of things are really important when you're not totally perfect. Um, and I really think that that was key for them. Yep. And, you know, so what else can we say about this defense? Anybody, um, if if you look at it, they, uh, Carolina was only four for 11 on third down. I think that's good. Their per carry average was 3.5. And Cam Newton didn't get loose. There were more designed runs. Yeah. But... Then, like then, we saw the uh, the uh, week before the in the previous game. I'm sorry, but uh, nonetheless, I, I think that they handled Cam. Cam bounced in and out, uh, but nonetheless, they did what was required. And how have you guys seen this defense progress over the course of the last month? Maybe not since they last played Carolina, but over the last couple of weeks, we we've seen uh, fewer points allowed from the defensive side. I've yeah, been pretty oh. – no, 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 go ahead. Oh, I, I was just going to say, I, I think, you know, if after, you know, someone scores and, and I think after you lose the way that the team lost to to Dallas in general, you know, you yeah. you kind of have to look yourself in the mirror and something something has to change. You have to – you you know, you got to play with a, a chip on your shoulder. And I think they have done that. You know, today, too, even before the game started, there, on the field, there were – people were jumping around and dancing and, you know, it seemed like there was a lot of energy from them. And I think they're just playing with a different kind of confidence and a different kind of swagger. And I, I think they know that they're improving, but they still – are humble enough to also recognize that we can be a lot better than what we are. And now we're going to flip the uh, side of the football, talk more about offense in quarter number two. It was another game, another week where the Falcons rushed for over 100 yards. It's three in a row now as this running game is really showing signs of life, both along the offensive line and in the offensive backfield, where, where we have seen Mike Davis catch a little bit of fire, uh, Patterson has done well. We've even seen Allison, who's now on the active roster, get into the mix a little bit this running game. How important has it been to get this thing going uh, as we go through the winter months? Yeah, well, I think 
as the running game has progressed, I think the passing game has also uh, – I won't say it's it's been maybe more effective, but you see the defense – it keeps the defensive line and the defense honest, you know. Mm-hmm. Guys aren't, like, pinning their ear back, ears back and coming after Matt because they know yeah. that, you know, there's a threat back there. You're not one-dimensional. Exactly. Yeah. You're not one-dimensional. So it just makes everything easier. That's why Russell Gage could get 130 yards last week. That's why he had, you know, 64 today and Pitts had five catches today and he was – Wide open on – well, that was third and 13, so I guess he should have expected a pass there. But I, I think – I would like to think that's why he was wide open on, on that third and 13. It would have helped my point. But <laughs> I think the I think overall the, the running backs look great today. But I think also today um, – C- I think everyone played well, but I think today also showed from uh, – because CP had 16 carries for, for 58 yards. Um, and on a lot of his – usually when CP gets in there, it's like a burst of energy, and he yeah. just – it's almost like when he gets in there, he finds lanes. But sometimes today, there just weren't lanes. And then when Mike got in there, it seemed like there there were sometimes, and he he averaged more yards per carry. So I think Tory talks about this a lot in terms of like th- there needs to be lanes for these guys to run through. And today we saw that in terms of Mike looked great, CP looked great, and also uh, Quadri looked great too. So yeah. that was a great day for the backs and their uh, third straight hundred yard rushing game. Yeah, I, I I'm going to talk about the offensive line again. Which I yeah. I feel like I talked about him <laughs> last week. I feel like I talked about him the week before. I'm going to talk about him again. I just really think that it's really telling how – I think you see with this offensive line how long sometimes it takes to install something and how long it sometimes takes for a group to understand the concept of what their offensive coordinator or, in this case, head coach, is trying to install and instill in them. And and I think you're seeing that play out in real time because I think for a long time perhaps they just weren't getting it. They weren't seeing the big picture of the run game. Things just weren't working out. And something that Arthur Smith has said over and over, he commends this offensive line for just sticking with the plan. And sooner or later, something's going to shake out. And I think we are actively seeing that happen because, I mean, against these defensive fronts over the course of the last three weeks, to run over 100 yards against them specifically, especially the last two games, has been a really, really big deal. And I think that it really goes to show you kind of how much work has been put in, but also kind of just like the patience of the process. And I asked Matt Ryan, I was like – it. He even said, you know, there's a confidence being built within this offensive line. You can see it happening. And and it almost felt like one of those things, and this is what I asked him, I was like, is it one of those things where it just took them doing it one time for it to finally conceptually click? And I really do think that. Like, just watching it, how how it clicked against Jacksonville, and it's continuing to click. I think that is so important because it almost feels like this offensive line is like, wait a minute, we saw we could do it. Now we understand it, the body motion. We understand the lanes, and and we understand our fit blocks and all that kind of stuff. Now we see it. Now we understand it. Now we can do it. Yeah, and uh, the the fit blocks part of it is so key because the timing has to. I'm not. I don't want to get a super football nerd here, but the timing of the blocking has to be very precise yeah. to get these plays to work, and the backs have to trust that it's going to happen. So when they say it's all eleven, that's It sounds cliche, but it's really true in order to see the types of results that that we're seeing here. Tori and I, we we were talking during the game how I think it was Mike Davis. He was able to get to the outside for for an 11 yard run. And I I said, gosh, he he doesn't normally he's not normally able to get to the corner like that. What's the deal there? And you say, well, Mike's not suddenly faster. It's because the blocking allowed him yeah. to get exactly. to the edge. I that's, like, what I, that's what I was saying. Yeah, right, it, yeah. It, was just, it was just there today. So yeah. he could uh-huh. do it. And there was actually a run late in the game where he could have bounced to the outside and maybe gotten a bunch more yards, but he would have got pushed out of bounds. So he just cut in yeah, he did. and kind of slid and fell down. So he, he would have had more yards today. Talk about situational football. Yep. I mean, just staying in bounds. Yep. It's so simple. But, uh, but, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. He bounced to the outside. They sealed it. Mm-hmm. They sealed the end. And <laughs> that's the difference. And it's crazy because how often – do especially Falcons fans they talk about offensive balance right that somehow the run has to get up to the level of passing volume they had 36 rushing plays 28 pass attempts wow they're still unbalanced but they've completely flipped it over uh, I think it is a positive sign that the commitment is there and the and that the results are getting better and we're kicking off quarter number three talking about our MVPs of the game and who kind of stood out 
to us over the course of this one who helped them earn a victory. They need more victories to get to where they want to go. And we'll talk about that in quarter number four. But who wants to start here? Who was, uh, Tori, your MVP? <laughs> for the game? That was very like, intense right there. <laughs> I wish I could have seen this because Scott is legit like staring daggers. <laughs> and he just go, he just points at me with so much fervent. Who wants to start? Tori. <laughs> I blame... The sweet tea and then the two cups of coffee. There's a lot of there's caffeine. a lot of caffeine. There's a lot of energy sugar. here. Yeah. That was all directed in one direction. Ew, that was intense, yo. Okay, it was. all right. Um, I don't necessarily think that this is my like most valuable player, but in my mind, this is somebody who I thought had a slow start, but I thought ended the game having had a really good day, and it was Dante Fowler. And I think that's probably going to feel a little off the wall to pick Dante when there are a lot of people, I think, that contributed to this win. But I was just kind of – you know, I was talking about the defensive line and getting after the quarterback. I thought that Dante did some things that aren't going to show up in the stat book that really caused – some incompletions or whoever was in the pocket, whether it was Cam Newton or, or PJ Walker to feel a little flustered. I mean, I know he had the one sack and then he had, I think three tackles for a loss, which the, that that's a big, that's a big deal for, for this defense to, to get an offense going backwards. Yeah, he did three mm-hmm. tackles for losses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Three tackles for a loss. I thought that was a big number. Um, so it, that to me was, Again, it wasn't that he had, I think, a, an amazing, like, awe-inspiring game. It was just – it felt like a pretty consistent game for Dante Fowler. And it, it it really did feel like he was doing things to affect the game. And I think that's why I – when I'm thinking about players that kind of stood out in my mind – he did, especially kind of after halftime when it really mattered. And I, I think that's important because if you go back to what you wrote after the Tampa game, it was about how they lost on both sides yeah. of scrimmage. That, 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 no one that, was touching Tom Brady. Right. The, the pass rush and the pass protection wasn't good enough. So when you have somebody in the pass rush that's impacting the quarterback, that it shows what you were talking about last week that, that, that was lacking, that was there and was a real advantage. Right for the Falcons' defense. Uh, Chris, yeah. who you got? Yeah, for me it was Michael Walker, and I think uh, what's what's cool today is that I think we're choosing a lot of people who we haven't chosen before because right. a, lot, a lot of people played well today. But but for Michael, we talked about earlier, um, his his pick six was the, the play of the day, and I think I'm also choosing him because of the situation. Uh, he had a kid five days ago, his son, Caden, who also has, a I think, a cool, unique name like, mm-hmm. like his and the way he spells it with a K-A-Y-D. Yeah. He also has a, a lot of names. Caden, I think it's Caden oh, Edward yeah. James Walker. Walker. Yeah. 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 That's a pretty cool name. Love yeah, it. So, I love it. So he, 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 then he did a Rock the Baby celebration on the sideline as a great. nod to his kid, and then he kept the ball and – Apparently he was at practice the day he was born. Mike said, which he was <laughs> shocked about, and and he also said, "How did he get away with that one?" Yeah, maybe he did. Talking about his <laughs> his mother, <laughs> and then AJ said it was a gift from God, and I just thought that was a really cool moment. It was probably a cool moment for him. And then on top of that, Cam Newton is his favorite player ever, yeah. and uh, he grew up uh, watching LeBron and Cam, and then to get his first pick, and it was a pick six against Cam Newton, was probably a great feeling for him. And it was the Falcons' second one in back-to-back games. So I think it was a great moment, a feel-good moment, and also a confidence booster for the Falcons' defense. Like, we're making big plays. And he said post-game, he said, you know, we believe in ourselves. And he said he said we believe in ourselves, and then I'm paraphrasing here, but he, he said, you know, we know we can do this each week. We know we can make big plays each week. It's just about executing. So I think plays like these and moments like these get the Falcons confidence. And then it's also just a feel good moment. Right. So it's my MVP. Yeah. Can we talk real quick about that pick six and foyer just kind of oh, like yeah. skirting yeah. in front yeah. of Cam Newton to yeah. kind of make sure that he didn't get, get yeah. after Wal- Ma- uh, Michael Walker. I thought that was hilarious. And that yeah. was a, a and that was big time. Though. It was, yeah. Yeah. it was, fu- it was so funny to me because he's just skirt. Yeah. And that was a, that was a moment ripe for a block in the back or right. some type of illegal block that would have changed things. It was very smart. It was a very yeah. smart skirt. Yeah, <laughs> it was. He went to Yale. He went to Yale. <laughs> he went to Yale. For sure. Uh, I'm going to go with a guy 
another guy who had a great week, Mike Davis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Named the Walter Payton Man of the Year. Please yes. go read Chris Rim's story. Yeah, it's about really the good. ride along and the Man of the Year presentation. Amazing stuff on AtlantaFalcons.com. And also, he comes back to Carolina, a place where he played. And normally, when guys get asked about extra motivation to play your former team, they say, nah, it's not a big deal, blah, blah, blah. He's like, yeah, it was. I know. <laughs> it was I a big Mike. deal. <laughs> <laughs> he was very upfront about it. The guy ends up with, um, if my math says somehow right, with 86 yards of total offense. He was impactful in the run game. He had a huge screen play, excellent design, by the way, H- huge screen play to kind of keep things moving. I think he's been better. He has. Thanks to the blocking. Yep. That I think that his style, if he gets ahead of steam that the blocking allows, yep. then he becomes that, 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 that hammer that he's been good at. So it is fun. Just like Chris said, I'm pointing – <laughs> a lot now. Sorry yeah. about that, guys. But it, it it is cool that we're that we're talking about different players. It's not just Patterson and Pitts and Ryan. Uh, that there were a lot of different guys that contributed to this game. They're going to need a lot of guys moving forward, and that's what we're going to talk about next. And we're starting quarter number four, uh, talking about the Falcons moving forward. They have four games left. They're in the hunt which is what every highlight show graphic will say when they're looking at the NFC, right? They're not within the seven seeds. They don't have a lot of tiebreakers. If we're talking about, you know, trying to extend the season, shall we say? There's a word I'm trying to avoid here, if you haven't noticed. (laughs) But nonetheless, I think that Michael Walker said that the playoffs have already started, right? Like that they have to go 5-0 and or 4-0. and And back to Chris's point about – how the youth responds and how the experienced veterans respond. Matt Ryan comes back and says, you got to make the big things little. You you can't think about four things when they need every ounce of effort to beat any team, to beat the Panthers, to beat the 49ers. And I think that that perspective is going to be required moving forward. But this victory keeps them in it, right, Tori? I mean, that that this one – was a gotta have it sort of a situation, but there's a lot of gotta have it sort of situations moving forward. Yeah, it really feels like there's everything that's left for them is a gotta have it. Right. You know, you can con- you can get away, I think, with you know a loss here or there, but you gotta go the next four games and win more than you lose. And, and I believe that uh, just kind of from looking at the way that things are shaking out across the league at this point in the season. There, there's the Falcons don't necessarily control their own destiny, but they do got to win, you know, like which I realize is not proper English, but I'm from Chickamauga, Georgia, so <laughs> I can say that. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I do think that at this point in time, th- there's a lot that needs to happen outside of the Falcons, but they got to do their part too. Yeah, I, I think in, for me, like like you were saying, Sky, I think it comes with with having good leadership in these kind of situations. And I think, too, like, you know, you say one thing, but it's it's hard to not say we have to go undefeated down the stretch. But but if if it's possible for you to say we need to go undefeated while still focusing on one game, that's that's the importance. And I think today Michael said that, and then Mike Davis was asked about that, and his face kind of was like, well, yeah. no, I think, we, <laughs> I think we just want to focus on each game and winning each game because, like you said, they don't control their own destiny, but winning helps. Yeah. They're still in it. And if you win, then you did what you could with the situation that y'all were in, and then you can build on it next year or, you know, maybe go into the post postseason. <laughs> <laughs> Saved it. I said the word. <laughs> that was good. But, but <laughs> almost said it. You didn't say the I didn't PL say word. Yes, you I didn't the say the full word. I almost said it. But yeah, so I think moving forward, I think having I think having guys like Matt and Grady really helped this team in a, in a, in the situation that they're in right now, and Mike and other vets like CP and, and everyone. Yeah, I don't know if this team is at a point where th- this elusive complete game that Tori wrote about last week, explaining the, the vision for offense, defense, and, and special teams. It, let's let's take complete game off the table. I think the fact that that the defense is playing a little bit better, that the running game is playing a little bit better, that Thomas Morstead is such a huge <laughs> factor oh in gosh. the field Shout position out battle. Out to Thomas, Thomas Morstead. Morstead. Wow. Yeah, he just follow me on Twitter to appreciate. He that. also followed me on Twitter, so <laughs> shout out still, to Thomas Morstead. I still don't have that, Thomas. What up? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's a. I'm sure he's a listener of the podcast for sure. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I mean yeah. he's among the billions. <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt. Uh, but you know, nonetheless, they've only won two in a row once this year. But uh, the point I was trying to make was that because all these uh, aspects of the Falcons game have gotten a little bit better, that they're 
more able to make up for some mistakes. So I think that that's important because they're not going to play a perfect game. But can they do enough to get by San Francisco and right. Detroit yeah. and Buffalo and New Orleans at the end? That those that that's how we have to kind of yeah. factor yeah. whether they're going to be worthy of continuing this season. Yeah, and that was like my lead tonight for my story after the game. I was like, it wasn't perfect, it wasn't even complete, but it was enough. Right, and that's what needs to happen moving forward. Yeah, and that's going to be this this team. It stays relevant. It stays interesting. It's not often pretty. Right. But they they just kind of find a way to do enough to stay in it. I, I wrote a little bit about Arthur Smith's role in all of this. I think he's done an expert job of from what the players saying. Sometimes he can be loud or passionate, whatever t- term that you want to use. Loud is an interesting adjective to, to use there. I yeah. was I was going to I was thinking like, yeah, I think passionate is probably <laughs> the better uh-huh. of, of the two. Yeah. But then he can also be really cerebral and objective and academic about it i think it's a good mix that keeps this team progressing and keeps has given them an ability to rebound now we have to see can they find some consistency in terms of uh winning results and that's what we're going to take a look for as we move forward the 49ers are up next we will check in with you from levi stadium in santa clara after that so you guys know what to do at this point you need to uh, rate review subscribe on itunes leave a review Oh, five yeah. stars. Five stars. That of would be course. rad. Uh, on Spotify, iTunes, or on YouTube. And don't forget to do all the same nice things for Falcons Audible with Dave Archer, DJ Rackley, and DJ Shockley. Appreciate you all. Talk to you again next week. <laughs>